Well, hello YouTube. Captain Dave Sport Fishing here in the Wolf Den. Which this has nothing to do with anything of that nature. This video is going to be about, I am now halfway through, uh, at least halfway, if not more, through my prostate cancer radiation. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to try to explain so people looking that are men that are looking for information have something to see okay and something to watch because i did it and i didn't get the absolute blow by blow little details and that's what i'm gonna give you i got my calendar sitting right here and i literally started I started on my first radiation treatment on Thursday, July 13th of 2023. My last one is coming up because today is the 9th of August and I'm done on the 22nd of August. So let me give you the whole blow by blow here about exactly the scoop. All right. You guys that are looking up information may have watched videos about people who went through the surgery for prostate cancer. I certainly did. I saw some things that I really wanted to kind of shy away from myself one being six weeks that you can't really do much they don't want you to like lift. what do they say don't lift over five pounds or something well i lift you know anchors out of the bottom of the saint john's river 40 feet 45 feet deep that weigh 40 something pounds <laughs> so i'm very used to that uh, so another thing was, is I had for years issues with uh, inflamed or enlarged prostate, which there's people out there that I'm sure have it. And you know what I mean when you talk about, when I, when I talk about urinary issues, we're talking like weekly, if not bi-weekly infections, urinary infections. Uh, not being able to hold it and not being able to literally evacuate your bladder, right? So that was cured when I finally reached the absolute pinnacle of all the medi medications because they can only go so far. So I've had all my you know, issues discussed with my urologist and everything. So I went through that and then it was fixed with a procedure called the TERP. And I went and saw the largest urology clinic, whatever you want to call it, in all of Northeast Florida, I believe. And even my urologist at the VA worked for them for 30 five years or something. He's an old guy, but he's sprightly. And I went there and sat down with, this is after the biopsies. This is after the uh, literally being diagnosed back in February. And it's now August, you know. So, I mean, this is a lengthy process. At least it was with the VA. Not that they're terrible by any means. Um, I've always been satisfied with basically what they can do with so many people. I sat down with a surgeon who would do it. He does 10 a week. And when I said I had the augering out of the prostate, the TERP procedure, and I said, yeah, that was, a you know, two, three years ago and everything. He goes, huh, oh, okay. So I left out of there going, you know, I really don't want to do this surgery. Number one, you got that catheter afterwards. Oh my God. Me and those catheters just don't seem to get along. 
I've had it before. I don't like it. I had just had one, I guess, back in January, February. I had a uh, 12 millimeter kidney stone taken out. Woo, man, that was that was a little brutal. And uh, had the catheter for a week after that. And, oh my God, that was terrible. So you get those uh, bladder spasms. Oh my gosh, they will drop you to your knees. So that's a different topic. But I didn't go for the surgery. There's a lot of videos about, I actually watched a guy who did the surgery. But he, he went all the way to New York City to have his surgery done by a certain doctor. And I watched all of his stuff, all of his videos. He did a video like every week. I don't think it's necessary for me to do a video every week because of the fact that the radiation really isn't like a big deal. So to get into the actual dirty details of the radiation, I'm doing it at 7 a.m. every single morning except Saturdays and Sundays. And I go to a place called Genesis, I believe it's called, and I see a, a radiation oncologist, great guy. Believe it or not, I took his, him and his parents fishing. I believe it was before I even got started. Before I even got started. Um, I'd have to look back when I took him, but we had, we had a fun day and his parents were extremely nice people. Then I started uh, the radiation. So I go to this clinic. This is, this is going to be the absolute, you've done everything. You've had your biopsies. You've had all your consultations for surgery. You had your consultation for the radiation therapy and you've you've uh, made a decision that you're gonna go with radiation, but you haven't started it yet. That's what this is sort of gonna be about. So when you go in there, it's a giant machine that's built into the wall. I mean, I like the details, you know? And I'm looking at this thing and it's built into the wall. It has to be a 10 foot circle built into the wall and it's got arms sticking out and this, this big, the radiation thing is this big arm that's hanging out. And I just made it real simple. You know, I, I take my boots off, I take my shorts off. Uh, well, prior to actually that, let me skip back just a minute here. Prior to that, you have what they call the run through. And I did the run through probably about uh, let's see, I, I got to keep referring back to my calendar because I don't remember all the dates and, and things like that. But I had my run through basically a week before the first day that I went for the radiation at 8 a.m. We did the run through. So, uh, went out, went out, did that. And that was going and getting scanned, I guess, for setting up the machine, the radiation machine. I thought, <laughs> I thought this was it. I thought, okay, hey, this is it. And then getting the tattoos. Uh, it's a little tiny blue dot, one on each side and one right above your pelvic bone, right? And they do that. It's so, there's no pain, there's no nothing. So just so you know, my dad went through this 24 years ago. Now, of course, they did a little bit different. <clears throat> he went to work every day. So that's what I was basing my entire situation on. Yeah, I did that. Then the next week I came back and we started the first one. Same thing. Boots off, shorts off, get on this table. Okay. Uh, I mean, I should know this by absolute heart. Uh, the two technicians that are there, 100% professional in every single way. You lay down on this table. Uh, oh, back when <laughs> you did your run through, they make a mold of your feet and legs laying in this foam. 
So it just sets you up perfectly. It sets you up so that your legs are basically in the same position. So you get you, you get down, you know, lay down on this table. They put a blanket over you. I have to drop the drawers. And the newest thing, they didn't do this with my dad. At least not that he could remember, and I'm sure he'd remember this. They put this, what they call the balloon. They got to put a balloon up your butt. Now, I really paid attention because guess what? I just got back. I just got back 15 minutes ago. And I was really trying to pay attention. So you got this, you're laying on this table, you got the machine all sort of above you and everything. And this balloon is about this big and about that big around. And they have to slather that up with some KY, okay? So you got your shorts down, you got your knee, knees bent. This is all the dirty details that I'm sure everybody would love to know. Off of this, it looks like a little short condom kind of thing is what it sort of looks like, but it's a little harder plastic and it's not soft, soft like a balloon would be where it's just stretchy and everything. But it's about that big and it has a tube coming off. And then from the tube there goes to a, uh, like a, Big syringe, okay? So they insert that in your butt. And he says to me, take a deep breath and exhale. I don't know why that's so important. And then they're gonna push the syringe and they're gonna inflate the balloon. And it is a bit of a toe curling kind of situation, no pain. No pain, but if you've been through biopsies, prostate biopsies, it's no worse than that. Except the biopsy, you know, you're getting the needle. Okay. So this is for people who are heading to radiation or want to know about what I'm, I've been doing. And they inflate this. Now that thing goes from about this big to about that big. And it goes about little, it looks like it expands a little bit wider. And it's a bit of a toe curl. You go, okay. But it, no, it doesn't hurt or nothing. They're just inflating your whole butt down there. I'd say about this far in, okay. It feels like, you know, for one second, I mean, literally one second feels like, oh God, I got a crap. But it's no, but I, I don't know if you have like really sensitive bowel, I don't know what they do. I mean, some people might have like a super sensitive bowel down there. And uh, for men, you know, it's just, this isn't pleasant. I mean, it's not pleasant, but it's so short. It's no big deal. I mean, good God, if you can, Go get your teeth worked on at a dentist, which I find absolutely the most brutality that there could ever be is going to a dentist, okay? I can't stand the dentist. This is nothing compared to that. So they inflate it and then you drop your knees, you put your feet and your legs, so just the bottom half from like your knees down into this foam thing that sets you up. They move you around a little bit. The machine comes over. There's these plate looking things that are about that wide, about that big. They move them in and then the actual radiation beamer machine, I guess, is about that wide and about that big around. It's got glass at the bottom. So you don't, you can't move around. They set you up because you got that tattoo and everything's with like lasers, precision lasers, right? So then the whole thing starts. Oop, I almost knocked the microphone over. I'm hoping the audio is good. A, sub, a subscriber, I guess, still, I don't know. He sent me this, so I hope the audio is perfection. I um, lay there, they leave the room. They're in like this command center outside of this radiation room. And, uh, I mean, like, you know, 15, 
different computer screens, big screens. And uh, you just lay there and it looks like they're calibrating because they put this jig over you. Looks like a jig, like something that if you're going to cut a board and you're going to just numerously cut the board, it goes over you. It's just like this little bridge that snaps into the table. And then it goes, er, er, looks like it's kind of calibrating and all that. So then they come in and uh, they pull out one, this, this looks like this cartridge type thing, put something else in there, put that away, blah, blah, blah. Take the jig, take that away. And then they go, okay, two, two minutes, you know. And then all of a sudden the machine starts working. The table might rise a little bit and you hear it going er, er, ee, 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 and kind of to me it sounds like if you if you're using a welder I even told the guy today I said that sounds like a perfect weld you know sounds like a perfect weld go kind of staticky but it's this this kind of staticky though right and it starts rotating and that's about it. That's it. You're done. After that, he comes back in. Okay, lift your legs up. Take the foam thing out. Okay, take a deep breath and he pulls that thing out of your butt. That's the worst part. That's the worst part. Now, prior, let's skip way back. You will have had, I'm sure, you're going to get a hormone shot. When did I get the hormone shot? Uh, I got the hormone shot before they, they actually give you this hormone shot. I can't even remember. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I had the hormone shot back on June 8th. So weeks before you get started, you should have had this hormone shot. And what they're doing is they're kind of shooting you with some estrogen or something. You know, men have estrogen also, as women do, but not as much. I got shot right here in the, in the belly, kind of the lower belly. And it actually, I mean, they got this stuff down to a science. So don't, don't get all upset about it. Uh, and it left like a, it felt like a little hard thing kind of in my belly. Now it's going away. It, it went kind of went away. It's like it's time release or something. They shoot you with this hormone with this big ass needle. I mean, they said, oh, do you want us to numb it and all this? And I, they put a little ice pack on it and I said, just let's do it. Come on. You know, so they stuck it and you leave and nothing happens. You feel like you got this little bump under your skin, right? So then that's the hormone. And it's kind of like as if it's time release. And I'll tell you, I've only got, let's say, you know, I've only got, uh, let's see if today's the ninth, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine more days. That's it. I mean, to quote like Jerry Seinfeld, you know, about a discomfort, a, uh, a, a terrible pull-out sofa bed for Elaine. Hey, you take out meals. You take out sleeping. You take out weekends. You take out fishing. You take out... Oh, it's, it's like it's nothing. It's like over. <laughs> so... You take all those things away and it's almost done that quick. So I got nine more days and what that will do is it time releases or something under your skin. And my dad even said when he went to work every day, he bought a little fan. I got it right over here because he gave it to me. I have to use it in my wolf den here because of the fact that it's so damn hot. I didn't turn it on. Usually I got it on because it's just so noisy, but 
that time releases. And I'm telling you, it didn't hit me until about a week or so ago where you start getting these hot flashes. And it's not, it's like they say, it's going to be like what a woman might experience during menopause. But for me, it's not that bad at all. I get it, but I'm already hot. I mean, if I'm outside and I'm doing something kind of strenuous, I've been working on cutting bamboo and all kinds of stuff, and it's just so burning hot out there in the middle of the afternoon now here in Jacksonville, Florida, and I just get extra hot. Because even the doctor asked me, so how's the, uh, you know, you getting any hot flashes? I go, yeah, yeah. And they kind of come, like, I don't feel them when I'm sleeping. I don't feel it when I get up. It's kind of like, it's 8, 8.15 right now. So it kind of builds. I'll, I'll feel it the most, you know, 1, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock at night. That's when I feel it. But that is to shrink your prostate with these hormones. They call it the hormone therapy or something. They shrink. They're doing everything they can to concentrate that radiation into it, I guess. So that's not a big deal. And they said that'll wear right off. That ought to wear off. At least that's what my urologist, old Dr. Whitaker, said. That'll wear off. So I'm hoping that by the end of this month, pfft, that's gone. I'm feeling, I mean, I literally had this, like, it felt like a, a BB under my, well, underneath my fat belly, but underneath my skin and a little bit in the fat layer. <laughs> and it's gone now. So it's in your system, you know, and I think it washes out of your system eventually. So that's the, that's the details about the radiation, okay, versus getting cut. I could not do that getting cut. I did not want to not have to where you can't work. They don't really want you working. I mean, if you've got, if you've got a strenuous job, you're not supposed to be out doing nothing for six weeks. So to wrap this up, I'm almost over. Now, the whole situation is when you're over, when it's all, the radiation is all done. I, every week I see my doctor on a Monday morning. I do the radiation and then I get, boop, go over to his, see his, over to his office in the same building. I go over and he comes in, okay, you know, they do your blood, they do your blood pressure, your weight. They want to check to see if anything's happening to you. He says, are your pee stream okay? Does it burn? Uh, are you having trouble going? Uh, anything like that? And I'm like, no, no, no. How's the, how's the, um, you feeling any hot flashes? Eh, just a little bit. You know, nothing bothersome. Um, he even told me, he says, you know, you could feel very, very tired at the end of the day. More than you would be. He says, some, some people are very tired. Well, I'm up at 3, 30, 4 o'clock every morning, no matter what. My eyes go, boop, I'm up, drinking my coffee. And so when it gets 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm already tired because I've been up forever. So the other thing is, just so you know, they may ask you to always come the radiation with a full bladder. Well, I drink two cups of coffee that are probably six ounces each. And then I have to drink at least something, one of these. I try to pound one of these, okay, on the way to the radiation place. I pound one of these, which is supposed to be 20 ounces. Then when my doctor was on vacation and I saw another doctor, this a woman, and she said to me, just so you know, uh, unsweetened, just plain old uh, cranberry juice will be good for you. And 
Because I think my dad drinks cranberry juice too. You know, he has kidney issues. And she said, take every single day vitamin D3. Not the little ones. You want the, you know, 2,000 ULs or whatever. She said, just pick it up at Walmart, Walgreens, whatever. And she says, take one of those every day because it's been, been uh, not proven, but it's whatever. It leans towards promoting health after cancer treatments or cancer in general. So um, that's what I'm doing now. I'm drinking my cranberry juice. I believe that's supposed to sort of help you a little bit as far as kidney stones, uh, urinary issues, things like that. So that's it. And I will probably do another heads up video here after the radiation because here's let me tell you what you do after the radiation because i asked i said what do you do he said well you're going to meet with your urologist and he's going to set you up on every three months psa test and he says it might still be kind of high-ish but as you go it's going to go boop, 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 down to nothing and that means you're good and he says you'll do three every three month psa tests I think he said at least for two years, two years. And then you go to every six months type of thing, which I was on the every six months anyhow, because prostate cancer is hereditary. It's kind of like if I had it on my mom's side with her father, my dad had it. So I've got it in my family no doubt, and closest relations to my dad. You know, I've been on kind of high alert anyhow. I get PSA every six months. But then again, me and my urologist, we've been big time buds for a long time because of all my inflamed or enlarged prostate issues that I've I battled with for years. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll do another one when I feel that it's time to... Let everybody know what the outcome is, I guess. You know, you don't really know what the next step is, but I know it's just a bunch of PSA tests and going to see my urologist, old Doc, Doc Whitaker. All right, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you found this informational. Give it a like, as they say. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.